Hey folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I wanted to follow up on the video regarding Dungeon Craft. Now, I was going to do the up-close cam and stuff like that, but I don't actually think it's necessary because these are pretty large. So, what I have here are a variety of the different boxes. Like I said, I have, there's Fallen Kingdom, Jungles of Dread, which are the new ones that are in the Kickstarter right now. And I also have uh, Castles and Keeps. And the one I opened just now was Dungeon Craft. So this is a brand new one. It was sealed when I opened it. And it comes with this little piece of paper that says cut out the pieces. And I'll show you that. But I'm sure you can hear that. These are wet or dry erase sheets that you can put down on your table. And it, you know, it fits in a box roughly that big. And for that size box, I mean, we have this, which is a ton of... Of uh, this is again, um, what is this? This was Dungeon Craft, which is map pieces. This is volume one. So you can see here's a rooftop, and then the inside is inside of like a building. And you can see all of these. We have different, different like taverns and stuff. So if you have, whether you have your own battle map or you have one of the ones from Dungeon Craft that you lay out on the table, you can just put this on. And here's a house, and here's another tavern. And then when the party says, Oh, I want to go in the front door. You flip it over, and now you have the interior, right? So that now you have two separate things, or this could be, you know, multiple layers of housing, depending on how you want to do that. And what it mentioned about cutting out was it has these, which I think you can see there are perforated lines around the edges here. And this is to drop, like, trees on your map. So say you have uh, terrain that's a little bit more... Uh, open or you just have like a like a green map and you want to say let's put some trees on there and you don't have the time to paint a ton of 3d terrain you don't feel like investing in that because we can all be regardless of how you feel about full-on 3d terrain it is expensive and it takes up space i know this personally i have a bunch of dwarven forge stuff and it takes up a lot of space uh and again it's not cheap so this is a flat pack this is a tree I can cut this out, now I have a tree, I have four rocks. But what's cool is I can flip it over, oh, and a chest down here on the bottom. And I can flip it over, and now I have a fall tree, I have moss-covered rocks, and now I have an open chest. And they have a variety of different things like that, so you could just take your green map or your open map and then just use, here's river tiles, so you can place them and build out your river. Again, we have big trees, we have snow-covered trees, autumn trees. These things are really, really cool. And again, they've been around for a while. I remember seeing them actually at some conventions when conventions were a thing. Right here's some clutch of dragon eggs, some campfires. Uh, then you can flip them over and there's spider eggs on this side and a lava pool. We've got summoning circles, wells. We've got a poison well and a different summoning circle. Um, you know, tent on fire, regular tent and so on. And then if we get through all of that, then we have some underground terrain, right? Here's rocks and crystals. Here's lava pools. Uh, and then this is rooms to do inside of like a dungeon or a temple, right? Here's a, it's got like a gargoyle there. Then again, we have more temple style indoor stuff, more dungeon related. Here's a big treasure hoard. And then at the end here, oh, here's more little rooms that you could do uh, with cut out pillars if you want to move pillars around to have supports. Uh, and then at the end, we actually have monsters, right? So this is, looks like orcs, wolves, and skeletons. But if we flip them over, we have different colored versions of all the same things. Uh, we have, again, orcs, hyenas, and zombies on this one. Then we have like Towns Guard and character NPCs, as well as magical like spiritual weapons down the bottom here. Werewolves, horses, uh, like lizard folk, undead versions on the back. Ride it, cavalry rides, as well as dragons on this one. Here's more dragons and stuff. So very cool. Again, this is going to fit pretty easily inside here. You can go to 1985 games. I think I picked these up right now, but we'll double check on that. Uh, and again, you get a whole bunch. And this is just, this is volume one. So then we had here, which was castles and keeps, which was siege and castle, like siege engines, castle pieces. And the stuff that I figure you probably would wanna see is the new stuff. Now, the Dun Jungles of Dread, I just have like a sample box to show off the cool box. But Fallen Kingdom, I actually have stuff inside it. So if we go ahead and open up that box, we can take a look. And this actually feels 
nicer than the original ones. The other ones felt like um, paper that had a lamination on it. This actually, this is, this is a like a plastic. See that white edge? This is essentially like a plastic material. And we have big like trees that we can cut out. We have like a rock, like a big giant bird here. Huge size, look at the size of this guy. Then we've got like some actual terrain pieces. So we've got like a, a broken kind of Aztec looking statue and an overgrown moss one. Here we have like a rock nest, the eggs in it, no eggs in it. These are probably my favorites. We have some turtles and a raptor down the bottom, as well as people riding ankylosauruses and triceratops, or if we flip it over, no riders. So just straight dinosaurs. Then we have some internal temple stuff here or like um maybe bazaar style because this is like the thing like in a town um let's see this all right let me just flip these out it'll be easier to deal with them um this is like a big tree like a hollow tree here and then this side is just like a pool of water so you can see they kind of they're not like this is basically some sort of underground pool or something and then this is a tree so very different or it could be inside the tree we have sort of outdoors in, uh, you know, an outdoor like temple or ruin. And then here we've got skeletons and things. And then we've got sort of like an encampment with looks like some kind of um, like mask wielding or wearing goblins. And then we have the inside of all of their tents. So I got to say, if this is the way all of the new ones are made with these kind of like um, PVC kind of plastic material, it almost feels... Um, I guess polystyrene, almost kind of like a for sale sign or something like that, which is a little bit nicer. And I actually really, I really, really like the texture on these a lot. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show these off in case you guys hadn't seen them. Again, once conventions are a thing, I'm sure they'll be there in person and you can play around. They actually have them like in a book where you can open up the book and take things in and out. These are just the boxes. They actually refer to them as books here. Um, but yeah, uh, they're also on a bunch of different social medias, which I can put in the description. I'll also, once again, put a link to the Kickstarter in the description if you want to go check that out. Now, like I said in the previous video, they absolutely blew past their stretch goals. So they are or their, uh, their funding goal. So they are in stretch goal territory now. We can go over here and take a look at the website. You can see here's a bunch of different options. Oops. So we'll go. Here's the one we were just looking at, Dungeon Craft Volume 1. Um, if we click on this... We can see there's a variety of different bundles that you can do. Uh, and here's one, this is uh, Cursed Lands. So if you're looking to replicate your sort of Ravenloft or you're, you've got Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft and you want to do sort of Domains of Dread. And don't forget, they do also have these decks of stories which allow you to help put together, if we were to click on the deck of stories, uh, you can see that they allow you to craft the story relatively quickly. So there's a little gif here of how that works, but flipping it over, um, launch your adventure by shuffling story cards and drawing uh, three. After reading the prompts, arrange them in the order that makes sense, taking cues from the orc storytelling system. Now you have a beginning, middle, and end for the story that's loose enough to adapt, but structured enough to move the story forward. So here's one right here. You are hired to mediate a trade dispute. Uh, decades of bad blood has created standstill. Next steps, what are they fighting over? Is the fighting, uh, is the fighting a delay tactic? Then we have your contact fails to show up. You get the feeling you're being followed. Next steps, are other NPCs missing as well? Is someone looking for him? And then the following one, or uh, you enter a bazaar where people sell new items from both the past and the future. Are the shops from across time? What kinds of things can you buy there? And so you have your opening, your rising action, your climactic action. And then they also have these NPC cards as well. And you can see there's boosters as well. So if you're a fan who likes to collect a lot of different card game stuff, like if you have all the different expansions for cards against humanity or stuff like that and you love having that big deck box full of everything we've got the genesis box the jungle booster the gears booster high water hell booster here again you can see the different books and they have um again all of the different options here and look there's a free npc booster use the code free npc at checkout when you spend a hundred dollars or more and receive an npc uh, npc booster number one for free Add the NPC booster to your cart, and the cost is removed when the code is applied. And again, we have all, here's the different two-sided maps. These might be worth your investment just to have them. Uh, and like I said, if you're, if you want to do terrain, right, and you don't want to spend a ton of money, if you want to upgrade beyond hand-drawn maps or, 
or quick sketches on a battle map or something like that. And you do want to do tactical combat so you have terrain where you can move pieces around. This is a great step for someone on a budget, someone on a space constraint, uh, someone that doesn't have the time to... Because it's also something that I don't feel people talk a lot about is even if you do have access to 3D terrain, it takes time to build out all of the little set pieces and stuff. This is just quick. You can lay it all out and you're good to go. Um, so again, space saving, cost effective, time effective, uh, and a great starter to see if this is something you even want to pursue further. Maybe this is your, your, your gateway into 3D terrain, or maybe you just stick with this. If you're someone, again, I know this was a big uh, thing that a lot of folks went again when conventions were more of a thing. It's hard if you're traveling to a con to bring all of your terrain with you if you're running adventures at the con, uh, whether it's Adventures League or even if it's not Dungeons and Dragons, it's just something else, right? Because that's the other thing. This isn't tied to D&D specifically. This can be used for any tabletop game. So, you know, if you, you could throw these in a backpack and then or a, a suitcase and get on a flight and fly to a con and have this ready to go when you get there. Plus, there's the there's a couple things that act as monsters and then also potentially as NPCs. So you have that at your disposal as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments if you're familiar with 1985 games and the Dungeon Craft series. I think it's pretty cool. Again, check out the Kickstarter uh, in the link down below, and I will see you all next time.